What's going on Fortnite fans? My name's Luke the Notable, and in this video, we're gonna be dropping vending machines 100 times. You may be wondering why I dropped vending machines 100 times, and it's because this video is sponsored by Mountain Dew Amp Game Fuel. They sent me this mini fridge! It's very full of Mountain Dew! And if you'd like to try out some Mountain Dew Amp Game Fuel, right now they're running a special promotion. Using the Amazon link in the description, you can get 20% off by using code 20LTN. And because it's Amazon, it'll probably get here before you're done watching the video. Now let's just get in to game number one. Here we are, game number one. Got the soccer skin on. We ain't messing around. I think it's probably best to go over the rules first before we start talking strategy. You are watching the vending machine 100 drops. In this video, I can only loot out of vending machines. If you haven't played Fortnite before, vending machines are all pretty much the same. They give you three choices of any gun you want, but you only pick one. That's not all. I can farm as many materials as I want because without materials, there's no way you're gonna win a game of Fortnite. And also because vending machines are a little bit stingy on ammo. I can pick up ammo off the ground and from ammo boxes, so long as I'm careful not to touch any guns. We're not talking strategy just yet, but ballers and other vehicles are valid. But again, any loot, guns, shield, health, gliders, anything must come out of vending machines. And that's pretty much it. We'll talk specific strategy in game two, but for now I have a blue grenade launcher, purple minigun, and gliders. While looking for more vending machines, my baller was destroyed. Time to fight with these guns, I guess. Left on one health, I spammed my grenade launcher, and it ended up hitting a player. Figured it was time to pull out the minigun, but only ended up destroying my own structure, then died. All right, now we're on game two. We're gonna talk a little strategy. I knew this was gonna be a pretty nasty challenge and Mountain Dew was involved, so I did my research. You see, there's vending machines all over the Fortnite map, literally everywhere, but they're kind of rare. So if you're gonna drop on only vending machines, you wanna drop on the most vending machines possible. There are three possible vending machine spawns in Frosty Flights and a healthy amount of ballers. After looting Frosty Flights vending machines, I'll then use a baller to move along the southern edge of the map, looting more vending machines. Happy Hamlet happens to be right nearby and also spawns a total of three vending machines. Using the baller, I can check over 10 vending machine spawns along the southern edge of the map, which is why I have to use the baller. This would be impossible on foot. Though this game, Happy Hamlet wasn't too happy. I was attacked, tried to kill him, but still died. And in game three, I was able to get the shotgun, but also got shot. Huh. I know I said I dropped mostly frosty flights in these hundred drops, but sometimes they go with their spots. Here, I went Paradise Palms. Just like my forefathers, while looting the vending machine, I was shot. And with three guns, low health, and a tiny bit of mats, I died, tragically. And I unlocked this emote. I think Fortnite might be mocking me a little bit here. Whatever, back to Frosty Flights in game five. I got a vending machine at least. Hey, I was able to find some health in a Happy Hamlet vending machine. And more health in another one. So later on, I was approaching the end game with a blue rifle, purple pump, and full health. Oh, and a baller, of course. You're about to witness my first kill of these hundred drops. Pay attention, it's a quick one. Might as well go over player looting here. I haven't gotten any kills, so really haven't had a chance. If I kill a player, I can keep his ammo and his materials. Nothing else, no weapons, no shields, nothing. This means if I take damage, it hurts real hard. It's already pretty difficult to get my health up in the first place. While fighting this other guy, we both damaged each other. I took the high ground and he took the low. Really didn't want to drop these minis. Could have been useful, but I had to. The other player had better guns and more of them. But in these hundred drops, that's probably just a theme I'm gonna have to get used to. Game six, I ran into a llama. I took the mats and the ammo. That's it. Here I'm dropping into the jungle where there's only one vending machine and it didn't spawn. So now I have to go all the way around the map looking for a vending machine. I found one. It produced a gold scar. Not bad. I made it down to Dusty Divot and gained some shields the old fashioned way. When I got to Salty Springs, I was attacked by a player on a quad crasher. He died quickly, but without a shotgun. So did I. Started off game seven with another gold scar. I was going for a vending machine and happy Hamlet when this default stumbled across my path. And even with my gold scar, his 200 health was too much for me. Game eight, I dropped Lucky Landing and got a drum gun, but didn't end up getting lucky. Fortnite's a lot about luck to begin with, but this strategy just turns that up to 11. I mean, Fortnite's hard enough as it is, even if you have a full inventory of great weapons. But when all you have is a long range rifle and the other guy has a shotgun, there's not much you can do. I dropped Paradise again in game 10 and got shot before I hit the ground. I ran to the vending machine, picked the first gun and it was a sniper and I sniped that filthy battle pass boy. I didn't end up finding any other vending machines, but when I dropped down on this one, a default was already there. I used my one gun to kill him. Even if I could loot him, he didn't have that much stuff. Still gotta heal up the old fashioned way. I made it to the end where I was of course attacked by another player. I built pretty well, keeping the other guy under my stairs. I was even able to get away and get the high ground, but I wasn't able to keep it and I died. Got a sniper out of the vending machine in game 11 and sniped a guy at 
the other vending machine. As you can tell by my inventory, I was very lucky this game. I even found a vending machine that was 100% minigun. My favorite. I pretty much just hid the rest of the game. No point in me shooting, guys. I'm just gonna end up getting hurt. Despite my solitary ways, I was still attacked. I used my gas grenades to make him flee the structure, but I didn't think he would die. Now I'm on foot in the final circle, and this one just turned into a one verse one My instinct was minigun, and I almost got him. No, really, that's one minigun bullet. In game 12, I had dualies, a shotgun, and rockets. Not bad. Part of the reason I have to use the baller is, again, you have to be quick. A lot of times in the end game, I don't find any vending machines. They're just taken. Yep, yeah, really wish I could open this supply drop, but I can't. Caught smell of another player and somehow didn't murder myself trying to kill him. There was also this whiplash who I trapped in, but also didn't trap in, and then once I killed him, the game was over. I didn't even realize. Game 13, in the end, I had one gun for a circle closing around Neo Tilted. Obviously, with one gun and 100 health, I'm no match for anybody, so I was just hiding. The only way I'm gonna win in this game is by dropping into the last second and cheesing it. Circle was getting small, and with a little bit of spraying, I turned it into a one verse one Other guy was above me, but I spent half the game destroying Neo Tilted, so I had tons of metal. I built so much that I ran out of metal, but that allowed me to take the high ground. Other guy was coming, and I knew I was only gonna have one more chance, so I sprayed! I sprayed hard! One gun! That's it! That's all I need! Still only on one gun in game 14, but I have full health and shields thanks to the coconuts and paradise palms. I lost full health and shields when this default attacked me, but I killed him. Someone heard the commotion. This is not looking good for me. Trapped at the top of this structure without gliders in the storm encroaching. I'm surprised I made it this long. Dropping with Big Chungus in game 15, I found a player without a gun, and I killed him. What'd you think was gonna happen? In this one, I had dualies, a shotgun, and a slurp. Oh, also a destroyed baller. Baller got destroyed, and I had to shoot my way out of this final circle. Tried to build over this player, but the tree got in my way. Then I had to drop down to his level, and he killed me. I learned a lot about the Fortnite map with these 100 drops. You just have to be resourceful when all you have is a couple guns. This crown of RVs near Paradise Palms is a great spot for mats. Wood, stone, metal, everything. Mostly just rolled around in this one. Made it to the end again, but not in the best of situations. While running towards safety, I was shot. I tried to get away with a launch pad, but was unsuccessful. Game 17 just cuts out. I ran out of hard drive space. So instead, watch me drink some Mountain Dew and game fuel. As you can probably tell, I don't last too long in game 18. I died doing what I love. I was only able to find a sniper in game 19. I was attacked by a player in a drift board, the baller's natural enemy. I even hit my one shot, but the default still killed me. In game 20, I pretty much just run around helplessly until I die, of course. Game 21, I was looking around for some loot. The only thing I had was a rocket launch. Oh, there's a guy there. Let's just back up. I waited for the perfect moment to sneak up behind him and kill him, but I was a little loud with my baller and blew myself up. Peely! The amount of banana cosmetics in this game is quite surprising. Started off this game with a sniper rifle, but that's about as far as I'd make it. I played as Toxic Trooper in game 23 and used my bow to kill this fish. I did absolutely nothing else and then was killed by this default. He won though, so good for him. Game 24, I dropped as a default in Neo Tilted. It was over very quickly. In game 25, I had a drum gun and only a drum gun. Still got one kill, though it did maim me severely. And as you can probably bet, I didn't live much longer. I had a grenade launcher and a shotgun in game 26, and I used the shotgun for one kill. <laughs> I want the med kit! 7 HP isn't technically dead, so I nutted up and moved on. It looks like someone else knows about the coconuts near Paradise Palms. I fired wildly into the structure and got one kill. Oh, the other guy was definitely scared. I never did end up finding healing, but do this enough times and you don't need to. If only I could have looted those players. Hey, game 27, we got some pretty decent stuff. Though I will say the coconuts were a little dry this game. Next to the coconuts, you will find a timepiece clock watch, whatever. It's on top of the mountain. Tons of different mats here. It's cool. This guy was in a bush, and I killed him. Ran out of mats in the final circle and died next game. For game 28, I was untouched all game until the moment I got sniped. Panicked and died. It was so sad. And in game 29, I died to a soccer skin with 16, uh, 17 kills. Next game, I died. Wow, so funny. Started off game 31 by getting a rocket out of this vending machine. Didn't get much else. Also, what's the deal with Ford fights, huh? I was attacked, and he obviously had a shotgun. I know it doesn't look like it by this footage, but I tried. I had three different shotguns and gas grenades in game 32. I picked up that gray one by accident. Despite my entire economy being invested in shotguns, I'm pretty bad with it. And honestly, I have no idea what happened here. After my baller broke, I jumped out with a glider for some reason. Tried to build over the guy, but didn't. And game 33 ends pretty quickly. I had a hunting rifle and nothing else. In game 34, I scoured the map, only found one vending machine, and it produced a minigun. However, while I do praise the minigun daily, 
immediately. It's not good in every situation. In game 35, if you slow the footage down, you can see that this vending machine had gliders. Don't know why I took impulse grenades. Trying to push into this player's box for like three years. Eventually, the fight was drawn out into the open and I sloppily got the kill. Though I was severely injured. Made it to the end, but with a sliver of health. And while flying through the final circle, I was shot down. I took impulse grenades because I already had gliders. Just realized. I made it to the end of game 36 as well. 1v1 final circle. I only had a spray, but also full health. I gave it a go, but came up a little short. I lost the footage for game 37, so I'm just gonna drink more Mountain Dew Amp Game Fuel. Dropping in with Mater in game 38. This strat can be pretty hard with a duo, and there aren't that many vending machines. Game 39, I had a shotgun. Mater had a grenade launcher. Somehow we used this wonderful combo to make it to the end game, though Mater went down. I rushed in to find his card and ended up taking up the squad that killed him. Later on, I got trapped at the top of the map without gliders. I tried to get down, but couldn't. However, in game 40, we did both have shotguns. It was gonna get a little dusty outside, dusty divot. And right as Mater went down, I dropped onto another player, whom I killed pretty quickly. But that storm was right behind me, and I didn't make it to safety. I'm just glad that this default had a good day. Game 41, you can tell I was very stressed out being trapped in this hole. Probably shouldn't have hit down there to begin with. Come on, we gotta win game 42. Look at us, we're sweating so hard. No, we didn't make it that far. Back to solos in game 43, farming mats for what seemed like an eternity. I did end up finding a bow and used it effectively to kill this baller and the player inside. But even in Fortnite season nine, without a shotgun, you don't have much hope. Balling around in game 44 until I came across this bunker Jonesy whom I killed. But someone heard the commotion and sprayed me down pretty well. Game 45 started with the killing of this innocent Jonesy in Frosty Flights. I spent the rest of the game in my fishbowl. By watching the kill feed, I could tell a soccer skin was killing everybody. And now he was upon me. I used gas grenades to distract him. Hey, bought me enough time to do some damage and get to my baller. I copped some high ground and when he tried to push me, I killed him with my tactical shotgun. Yeah, that's the name of a sweat for sure. Last guy in the match was in the open, so I popped out and shot at him and bravely hopped back in my baller and skirted towards the best position. From there, this rock said to run headfirst into my rifle bullets. Probably wasn't gonna work out for. This is not a fish skin. It is a shark skin. And in game 46, I made it to the end again with better weapons and more health, but still no gliders. And I think it'd just be better if we got on with game 47. I, I don't really like it. I did have to rely a lot on building in these 100 drops, and that definitely taught me how to build better. And building better makes kills easier, even if in this game, I didn't win. Game 49, I was just looking for more vending machines, but only found pain. And in game 50, I set down my controller to pee. I had been drinking quite a lot of Mountain Dew. Left on auto run, number one changed to number two. Then I clogged the toilet and died. It's game 51, and I have an announcement. Definitely noticed in the first 50 drops, I wasn't really fighting players. There wasn't really a point to. So in the second half of this 100 drops video, I'm going to be treating enemy players like human vending machines. If I kill another player, I can choose one item off their person. This guy had a nice stack of minis, which I took. Didn't help though, because later instead of just shooting this player, I tried to place a trap on her floor, which wasn't valid, and I died. So just so we're clear, game 52 started by me killing this player with my pickaxe. He dropped some minis, so I picked them up. But nothing else, just the minis, one item, each player. I think this is a little bit more fair as it gives me a valid reason to defend myself. But of course, even with this little buff, this challenge is still incredibly hard. Not sure why game 53 looks like this, but it does. We'll still love him. Shotgun, scar, and gliders in game 54, which is pretty much all you need. No baller in the end, but I did have a sky base made of metal. I do love dropping down with the combat shotgun and firing. It's terrifying. This player missed all of his shots and allowed me to win the game. And I swear, I really, d I, I won game 55. You gotta believe me. This is all I have. I, uh, I guess we'll just have to go for three wins in a row for you to trust me. As you can probably tell in this one, I had quite a lot of weapons, which meant quite a lot of options. I was approaching the final circle with my bow, a couple kills, and flesh wounds. One verse one in the final circle, and I was determined to use my bow to win this game. But when the other player pushed out just a little too long, I poked him enough to win. Kinda wasn't expecting it, honestly. But in game 57, what I thought was going to be an easy shotgun kill turned into an embarrassing pistol death. And in game 58, I tried to spray my best with a gun that doesn't spray. Game 59, I had a rocket launcher and was ready, but not ready for that! Yeah, he really caught me by surprise. Game 60, I could feel the John Wick euphoria as I hunting rifled this player in the body. But because he had a shotgun, he became Papa Victory. I kept my nose incredibly clean in game 61 until I sniped this player from like a mile away. Moving on into the final circle with two guns, one mini, and a ton of mats. I even killed a second player, but because I had to spray her down, I took some damage. Then saw my one chance on the last rocks in the game. With a shotgun, easily would have had him. But because I had to spray, I was lost to the storm. In game 62, I only had a shotgun and gliders. It ended bad. I had to resort to the Polar Peak vending machine in game 63. There's a reason I don't come here. It never 
friends well. I had a shotgun and a star in game 64, which is enough. I also baller bombed this default who was just trying to make his way in the world. Kept the baller alive to the end in this one. Honestly, I'm getting better with my baller skills. This game turned into a one versus one and I pushed the other player with everything I had left. Wasn't that dumb? Got a little lucky in game 65. Didn't have much except my baller and the ability to spray wildly. The first guy I killed dropped a chug jug, but before drinking it, I made sure to kill this banana by shooting him in the toes. Didn't have much loot, but despite my lower status in this society, I still made it to the end, where I found a default who totally destroyed me. Wasn't even close. I'm missing game 66 again. Good thing I got plenty of Mountain Dew Amp game fuel. <laughs> game 67, I had a rocket launcher. And if you didn't know, I'm pretty good at using those things to blow myself up. Game 68, you know we already out here balling. Like normal, I had no shotgun, so I was forced to spray down this man to his eventual demise. And I didn't win, even though I did find a shotgun. Do I even have to say what game it is? I'm not going to. In this one, I had a gold pump, gliders, and way more hope for this game. No shotgun in game 70, just automatic rifles. Spraying my way downtown. I made it to the end of this one. Pretty injured, but also pretty armed. And I had a metal sky base, so I had that going for me. Yeah, I was injured enough that when I dropped off the metal sky base, I died. Started off game 71 with a bow. Nice. And while I wasn't perfect, I did use the bow to secure some kills. I also had a shotgun for once, which is always welcome. But like a lot of these games, I never really found any healing items and died. I wasn't very well armed at all in game 72, but my building skill allowed me to tower over this other fish. I maintained high ground long enough to watch him disconnect from the match in the water. Must have felt at home there. I picked up his gliders even though he dropped minis. I figured I could get some shields with coconuts. And trusting in coconuts ended up being a horrible mistake for me. In game 73, I had two rocket launchers and managed not to blow myself up, but I didn't have a shotgun. That's okay, in game 74, I had a shotgun and a drum gun, which is the banana's worst nemesis. Played pretty well in this one, upgrading my shotgun to gold. Tragically though, when I killed this player, his loot floated into the storm. Final circle, and I had a scoped assault rifle. Wow, I probably have never used this thing this late. Again, without healing items, gliders, or any of the amenities that I normally enjoy, this is gonna be a tough one. My only hope was that I could get the first shot and he would be absolutely low. I did, but he wasn't. Game 75, the first vending machine I looted had a shotgun, and that would be the only gun I would get all game. But as you can probably tell, I did have quite a lot of metal. The plan was to somehow find a way to cheese it at the last second. I got a quick passing kill on a player just running by, and while going to loot, I was shot from above. He saw that I was on low health, so he pushed down at me, but unfortunately, he didn't know. I'm no fish. I'm a shark. Just a shotgun. I never really used that infantry rifle, but I don't really know what I was doing in game 76. And game 77 just cuts out. Ran out of hard drive space again. Mountain Dew Amp Game Fuel! Game 78, I got pretty lucky and looted quite a few vending machines. I also took my luck into my own hands, running into the storm to push a player with my gas grenades and get more loot. So by the end of this one, I wasn't fully stacked, but I had everything I needed to win. And even though in the end, I ran out of materials, the other player was lost in the storm and I won. Game 79, starting off with just a little bit less, just a shotgun and a sniper. But as long as I have a baller, I can use the element of surprise to kill any enemy I choose. This was definitely not a quiet game. That default's twin brother wanted revenge and I sent him to the glue factory. I made it to top 10 where I found a player trying to loot a supply drop. I said trying. I did say this was a pretty crazy game, but thanks to my gold combat shotgun, I won. And I had just bought this dance, so now I'm breaking it in. Oh yeah, game 80 was fine. Started like any other normal game, only I was only looting from vending machines. Moving through the area with my baller and saw a player in the open and was a little eager to get out and shotgun him. I'm sure that wick was very confused. In game 81, I had really good guns and didn't run into anybody. Unfortunately, I never did find shields and I looked for a while. Later on, I took refuge in one of the old pirate camps. I'm being honest, I didn't notice that default there until I did. He didn't put up a fight anyway. I played pretty well, never did find shields. It was gonna be a hot drop in frosty flights this game so I just went straight to Happy Hamlet. Not much in this game. Drum gun and a mini gun. I was still only on 100 health and it didn't help that I got shot in the leg. The other player did end up chasing me down and killing me, but I got a trap off and he died too. We're gonna try out a game with Hazard Agent for game 83. Everything was going normally until I fell into a player's box that I probably shouldn't have fell into. Wait, wait, is that a Facebook gaming promotion? Ugh. Game 84, I died. We all will one day. I found a llama in a tree in game 85. I actually ended up leaving him there. I very well attempted to overcome the spraying of this man's drum gun. With all of my building might, I tried, but I wasn't able to. He got me out in the open and took me out with a shotgun. I found another llama in game 86. How lucky. I made it to Salty Springs and killed a player with a shotgun with nothing but a rifle. Don't worry, I didn't use that med kit. It was just in my inventory. I was engaged in a fairly confusing build fight near Salty Springs, and I lost the other player for just a second, and he killed me. In game 87, I didn't find anyone, not a soul, until I found this default.
default skin, just wandering around lost. I really didn't want to hurt him, but I probably had to. Hey, he was carrying some nice little trinkets. Made it to the final circle in this one. Man, I still had that default's medium shield on me. I had to drink the default soul, but it's a one versus one now. Let's do it. Dropped down from the top, missed my rocket, and missed my shotgun. That was a close one. I posted this shot from Game88 on Twitter. It was nice. Though while obeying the rules of this weird strategy, I was shot. However, these hundred drops have taught me to be incredibly slippery. This player never touched me. I still died, but it was by the storm. A fine start to Game89. Hey, final circle with a decent chance this time. Spring into another player's box and I got sniped. And then I got sniped again. Last 10 games, these are for all the marbles, even though I'm not really competing and no one should ever use these strategies. Went to check my second vending machine and I found that a default had already taken it. So I used my deagle from the first vending machine to kill him. Later on, I baller bombed a player in Fatal Field going for a vending machine. That's my property. I took him by complete surprise. He had no idea I was low and he had no idea I had two guns. I also found a default friend who put up zero fight. Literally. I gotta say, I traveled a lot in this game. Here I am in Lazy Lagoon killing noobs. I was moving into the final circle with a lot of good stuff and a good chance to win until I hit the ground. In game 91, I had a shotgun, scar, and a bush I found. I didn't have a ton of mats in only only 100 health, so I pretty much just laid low, even in the final circle. Yeah, and this one I was able to hide all the way to second place. Started off game 92 with a shotgun out of a vending machine near Frosty Flights. I was also able to find some health in a Fatal Fields vending machine. And that was it. Shotgun, gliders, and a ton of mats. One versus one in this circle, and I had to make sure to get up close. This man was no pushover. He was an incredibly fast builder, and with no spray, that was gonna be difficult. It's possible to win with just a shotgun, but not probable. Going for three second places in a row in game 93. I was having a little bit of fun with each Easter Wick killing defaults in game 93. I made it into the final circle with my baller and bravery. As you can tell, the end of this one got pretty hectic. I wasn't even killed by the guy I was building on. I was killed by someone else entirely. We can put on Fire Wick in game 94. I checked probably 10 vending machine spawns, and the only thing I found was this blue AK. And I would take that blue AK all the way to my grave. That's okay, because in game 95, I was able to loot a lot more vending machines. I also farmed mats in Neo Tilted for a while. I talked about it earlier in this video. It's great for strong mats, like stone and metal. I saw that this player had the Cincinnati Bengals NFL skin on, so of course, he was an incredibly easy kill. Final circle was on top of a mountain, and I held the ultimate high ground, and using my Boombo, got some kills. 1v1, and I could tell that the other player in this match had a very expensive phone. This time, we were backwards. I had health, but no materials. I hid behind this glorious tree and let the storm overtake me. The other player didn't see this coming, and I won! You know, that ain't a bad win total, especially for only looting out of vending machines. Well, let's see if we can add to that win total in game 96. Probably not, because it's Hazard Agent, but I can keep the mystique going. Yeah, I never ended up killing anyone until someone killed me. Game 97 was pretty quiet. Didn't kill anyone until I sniped this guy. I did have to get up close and personal with this bunker, Jonesy, but because I had good loot, he was no match and ran away. Another player had just rifted to the top of this structure. I tried to baller bomb him, but it didn't work. Frosty Flights was pretty packed in Game 98. There was a player in the hangar and a player shooting at me from the side. I was able to hammer out some good damage with the only gun I had. I let him have it until I ran out of ammo. Once I ran out of ammo, I ran away. Luckily, I found a chug jug in a vending machine and healed completely. Near Fatal Fields, I was engaged in a spray battle. Without a shotgun, this was my only option. And when my spray ran dry, I went for my pickaxe and died. Game 99. We're getting there. I was involved in a pretty nasty build fight with this player in Polar Peak. I had no materials and I lived with one health. Oh yeah, and default danced on him. I also made acquaintances with this bunker Jonesy. He didn't hit me once and I killed him. After that, it was mostly just baller footage. I was just hanging out in my box waiting for the circle to get smaller. And I got sniped. Uh, good job. You made it in the video. Game 100. This was definitely a tough one. This was obviously a hard challenge, but it did teach me a ton about Fortnite. I had to drop in and use nothing but the weapons I found in vending machines to get some wins. Of course, this forced me to rely on building for the most part, which made me better at building. But I said that before. Let's just get on with it. I was farming mats on the top of Polar Peak when I knocked my baller off the structure. I thought it was the end of the world until I saw a player moving down below, and I used my bow to kill him. Rolling around to the final circle and saw an empty baller, so I decided to hide by it. I don't know, kind of blended in, I guess. It worked! I made it to the end, and my hopes were high. Now it's a one-on-one. -on -one. Despite my horrible injuries and being a fish, I came flying down at the other player, but didn't stick the landing. Considering my situation, I'm okay with that. That is it for the video. Do want to remind you about the special Mountain Dew Amp Game Fuel promotion happening right now. For a limited time, if you click the Amazon link in the description, buy some Mountain Dew Amp Game Fuel, and use code 20LTN, you'll save 20%. Amazon sells a variety pack of Mountain Dew Amp Game Fuel, which is perfect for trying all the flavors. And that's pretty much it. Thank you, Mountain Dew Amp Game Fuel, for sponsoring this video. And thank you for watching. Please stay notable.
I'll see you in the next video.